Thank you, thank you. It's uh, always fine when people applause before we start. <laughs> then we can't lose that anymore. <laughs> so, uh, it's very hot here. <laughs> For you too? Okay. <laughs> well, I hope uh, we can make it a little bit hotter. Um, <laughs> and I, I know uh, it's, uh, it's weird. We are almost in the break, so uh, I hope you will have some energy to listen and uh, to to us um, uh, and uh, to us. Yeah, I have some cards to say also to you. Um, um, to us is uh, my name is Van Verschoor. I'm from the Greenland, and I'm here together with uh, Jochen van der Berg. Van der Berg. We do the presentation, and we are also here together with Paul Sakerberg, also a colleague from. Uh, 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 the Greenland, uh, Rick Wijnhoff, we are with a whole team. <laughs> uh, Lulu van Ravenstein, uh, Jan also here, uh, Jan is here also, Jan Merke, and Mark Vries. Uh, uh, unbelievable, we only miss uh, Tom Zelstra, so uh, who is not from the Greenland? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to you all. Um, let's first, okay, I know who they are, but uh, we don't know who you are. Uh, so first, uh, who's from Flanders? Okay, who's from, I have to, uh, from Wallonia. I searched it on Translate, what Wallonia was in English, Wallonia. Okay, who's from Belgium? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> very good. And who's from the Netherlands? Greenland, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, welcome also. Um, and uh, yeah, so who's non-government? Okay. Non-government, non-government, okay, okay, okay. And who is an open data reuser? Okay. Who is an open data owner? Okay, cool. Um, well, um, first thing is today is about connecting with your environment because that is, in our opinion, the most important thing uh, for open data. So uh, please uh, uh, rise and uh, give a hand to the nearest person next to you who you don't know. <laughs> okay, and now I have some, uh, two, uh, two, uh, some energy, so you can stand up if you want. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going uh, to uh, do uh, some statements uh, where you can raise your hand. Or you, uh, Go to Greenland, stand up. Everyone, everyone stand up, stand up, stand up, please stand up. So it's stand up comedian and uh, it's warm and, and so now you know how warm it is and my height always. Um, um, okay, uh, let's, let's, let's uh, have a couple of statements. They don't come on the screen, but I will. Uh, then you're going to think too much about it. Uh, so um, uh, um, I'm going. To the first statement is: publishing open data is a good strategy for meeting transparency objectives. If you say yes, raise your hands. One more. One more time. Okay. Uh, open data is a good strategy for transparency objectives. Raise your hands. Okay. <coughs> the people who raise their hands, sit down. <laughs> it's really bad. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, stand up again. <laughs> I can't read open data, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> and, okay, there was going to be a long half hour this. <laughs> Publishing open data will encourage innovation. Uh, everybody sit down. <laughs> who, uh, who said yes, sit down? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, next one. To speed things up. We'll stay seated. Stay seated. Oh, let's uh, please rise. <laughs> right. Excuse me, next time we do it the other, the other way around. To speed things up, it's good to start publishing low-hanging fruit data. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to publish data. You say, well, let's publish something and let's go low-hanging fruit data. Who thinks it will speed things up? Okay, who says yes? Please sit down. <laughs> ah, great! Let people stand here. Okay, we go on, we go on. Okay, uh, publish data and it will be used. 
Oh, very good. Uh, societal challenges can be solved with open data. Please sit down. I don't know what's good or wrong. It is not a game about good or wrong. Um, we need an open. We need an open data ecosystem. Please stand up. <laughs> okay. Okay, and that's the last but not least. The truth of all of this is out there. That's a bad. It's out there. It's not there. It's out there. Okay, give yourself a hand. Very good. You are all open data heroes. <laughs> Thank you. It goes faster than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we are uh, together. Welcome. It's the clicker. Oh, the clicker. So, oh yeah, this is my own. Uh, sorry. I'm doing my uh, my own presentation. Normally, I present only for myself. So. <laughs> and we today we're together to talk about Flavorland Smarter. Working together on open data. Flameland, Flame, uh, no, no, Jochem is going to tell what Flameland is. Uh, Flameland working together on open data. Um, who's working together on open data? Well, there are not three, no four musketeers. The local water authority of Zuider Zeeland. The municipality of Lelystad. This is in the Netherlands. Uh, this is Flameland, it's in the Netherlands there. Uh, the province of Flameland and the municipality of Almere. And we, as Greenland, we help them working together on open data. And we have one goal, and we, as I talk uh, for the uh, governments, uh, we have only one goal, is to support external stakeholders, the environment, with open data. And very important in a way, it serves their operations and our, as a gov, assignment at the same time. But only then, open data will succeed. Uh, anyway, that, that's my opinion. Yeah? So that it be every, every, every other opinions, but what I say is not uh, what to say. Not, not the bad truth. Not, it's not the yeah, it's true from my perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, only one goal. Okay, where did we start? We start in the organization because when we want to go to external stakeholders. And uh, assignment as a go and their operations, me as a uh, data, uh, well, whatever I am, do something with data. I don't know the network. I don't know the stakeholders. I don't know their operation, and I don't know your assignment as a government. Government. So I have to go there. So what we did, we went there. This is the robot. You have seen them probably on uh, here on the balcony. Um, and so we organized sessions for uh, governmental policymakers and implementation uh, colleagues, etc. And ask and look for enthusiastic people who want to work with open data in their assignment. So we did. A lot of people came. It was a lot of fun. Uh, standing, sitting, standing, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> writing things down. So that's, that's really cool. And we uh, ended in five cases. Five cases, how can open data support communication about maintenance of bridges and locks? I never heard of it, but now I know everything about it. <laughs> the local reuse of local waste wood in Almere. They have a lot of trees, uh, there's a, a, a tree a illness, and all the wood has to, uh, to go anywhere else, but they want to have it reused local. Uh, farmers in soil subsidence, how can open data support farmers in soil subsidence areas Jochem will tell something about that. Uh, how can open data support telling the story of Flevoland uh, to the world? And how can open data support communication about maintenance in residential areas? And this is from Lelystad. This is for uh, Provincie Flevoland. This is for uh, the Water Authority. This is for Municipality of Almere. And this is also for the province of Flevoland. Is there something? Oh, this is the air okay. The echo, it's, it <laughs> broke down, I think. Um, okay. What is our approach? I always also look on the time, thank you. Our approach is this. 
where to start outside because our goal is help external stakeholders. So we start, and this is the playing field we are in, uh, in our open data project. But we start in the external stakeholders. <coughs> who are you, who are they, and who are they? And what's their business? What are their activities? And then listen to them, find trigger points for data. How can data help their activities, their business, in a way it meets my assignment? And it meets also their primary business. There are all kinds of solutions which they use for their business where this data can, uh, have, uh, can, can be used. Well, uh, we're going to uh, illustrate this with a couple of examples. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Well, the first case I will tell you about is the case about the story of Flevoland. And I want to ask uh, the non-Dutch people here uh, if they can tell me what is special about Flevoland. It's named. <laughs> <laughs> Already, but the Netherlands is also a weird name, so that's not it. Someone else? It used to be water. Exactly. Exactly. Very good. Uh, it used to be water. So uh, in the 20th century, uh, for almost half a century, it was a big project, it was the biggest land reclamation project uh, of the world, and it still is actually. Um, and they reclaimed land from, from the sea. Uh, right now it's a lake, because they closed it down. Uh, and they built uh, cities on it. Uh, they selected the perfect citizens, the perfect farmers. Uh, for example, my grandparents were selected as the best farmers of the Netherlands to go there and farm there. Um, because they wanted to create a new society on this, this whole new province. And this is a unique story. And uh, only one person here uh, who is not from the Netherlands knows it. And even in the Netherlands, we look at uh, Flevoland as a little bit of a boring province. Nothing really happens there. We look, look down on it a little bit. Um, and that's why the province of Flevoland, they really want to tell this story to the world. And they have uh, formulated a new uh, policy ambition to, to have in 2030 to, uh, that the whole world knows the story of Flevoland. Um, so together with us, this is uh, an image from uh, really in the beginning. It says neighborhood. It is, they didn't even have a name uh, for it yet. <laughs> so uh, it just said neighborhood, and that's how the whole cities were created. And um, what did we wanted to do, what they came to us with was the challenge to tell the story. And can we use open data to tell the story? Um, so together we, we went looking for, okay, how can we use open data to tell the story? Who are the players in this field of uh, this historical story of Flevoland? We have the Flevoland Archive, who has all the materials of Flevoland of the past 50 years. Uh, we have um, projects in Flevoland who are already telling historical stories about, for example, water heritage, for example, uh, the green elements. The Forestry Commission is uh, creating a book right now about the history of Flevoland. So they need uh, materials of data or data uh, for, uh, to tell the story of Flevoland. Um, but we also thought, okay, if we want to reach as many people as possible, what channels are we going to use? Are we going to build a website again, uh, purely focused on Flevoland? And is this website going to reach enough people so that the whole world knows the story of Flevoland by 2030? Uh, we didn't think so. So we, select, we said, okay, we want to look for channels uh, that have a big reach and uh, that reach the whole world. So can I ask you, for example, what, if you search on your phone, what do you use to search? Google. Exactly. And what is most of the time the first hit on Google? Google. Exactly. Yeah. So we thought we want to uh, use Wikipedia to uh, publish open data. <laughs> to publish open data uh, from these, these stories that we have found. The stories are about the water heritage and about uh, the Forestry Commission. Uh, and together with the Flevoland Archive, we want to publish these collections on uh, Wikimedia Commons. And um, by doing so, we learn how to do this for these collections, but we also learn the, the Flevoland's archive. We learn the Flevoland's province uh, to publish this. And so if they can do this for this data set, they can do it for every data set and for every team and for every project. Uh, and that is what we are trying to achieve uh, here, that they can scale this up uh, towards also the example from the National Archive in the Netherlands, who published almost all of their uh, photo material on Wikipedia and right now have 70 million page views per month. And Frank will tell you now about the bridges and locks. Yeah, and the, the one thing, the status of this project is that we are in the last phase, the last phase of the project, so we are now, we have 
the most time we spend on understanding the business, connecting with people, etc. Uh, we, we still have it, and that's it's almost, I'm proud of it, that we still have it published substantial data sets because we are only busy with understanding the business, what's going on there, what will help people, um, uh, and then we go into publish data. So this will be uh, live in about one or two uh, months. Um, so I will tell something about the communication about maintenance of bridges and locks. Okay, let's see, yes. Um, what uh, the, the province, they want they, the, the communication with their environment is very important. Uh, the next five years, there will be large maintenance on bridges and locks uh, in the whole uh, province of Flevoland. And it causes also locks, uh, so that you can pass the sluice, or you can pass uh, blocks, and you can pass the bridge, or you can't pass the, 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 the sluice or the locks. Uh, so that's very important for them to communi communicate. They sell up, uh, well, uh, they heard about open data in the sessions. Mm -hmm. Can you help us? Okay, uh, yes, we can. Um, uh, so we start in the environment now. Well, who uh, have we talked to? We have talked to um, uh, residents. We have talked to farmers near to bridges, near to logs. We have uh, uh, talked to uh, boat constructors who are behind the log uh, doing their business. We have talked to uh, tourist, tourist organizations, uh, hotels, all that kind of stuff. Okay, what's your relation with the bridge? and how important it is that it functions, and when it doesn't function, uh, 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 what does it mean for you? And how can we help with, uh, with data? So we did. Eh? For example, we talked to uh, this, uh, this transportation organization for sand and green, uh, the stones. Uh, and for example, what they said, well, the only thing I want to know is when the uh, bridge uh, is locked, so I can pass it, and how long it will take. Because if it's locked, I can go over it, and I go, the whole day I go over it. And if I can't over it, I have to choose, am I going to, uh, to make a detour of 40 kilometers, or am I going to wait? So that's time and money. So for them, it's very important to know that information. On the other hand, it's very important to know the planning of maintenance. Because they plan their work also on that planning. Yeah, because if they make, uh, 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 they have work on the other side of the of the water where the bridge is over, and they have to 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 drive 40 kilometers more, they they will count that to their customer. So that's for them very important. So that's for example what uh, we have a lot of a lot of this kind of chances we uh, we uh, uh, harvested from the conversations, and we're going to uh, execute that. So that's. You don't have to read this, uh, because this is what people want. There are all kinds of channels and what we're going to do about that. For example, um, the province, the province of uh, Flevoland, they had a strategy to use Twitter for communication about uh, um, the maintenance of bridges and locks. No one who we, sp who we spoke used Twitter. No one. And they also said, well, this is from whole Flevoland. But the farmer next to the Albert de Brug, only wants to know information about Elburg Club. Because all this is much, this, this is too much. And only at the moment that it's relevant for him in the time that he needs it. And he is on the land and he has only uh, a, 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 a simple telephone and he only uses WhatsApp. So what we said for you, don't use Twitter for, communi for direct communication. But these, these messages are very interesting. So can't we? Uh, uh, get the messages, uh, 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 can, can we make a database of the messages and then feed other channels? But that, that's one example of what uh, the result is from the conversation. On the other hand, this is for rotor traffic. The, the, the organization uh, um, um, fills the, the local traffic control system. From there, data is going to the national uh, data warehouse uh, traffic uh, data, and they publish open data. So, but they don't know that this data is going through this pipeline and at the end comes to all navigation systems and all other services uh, for people. They don't know that. That's what we're going to do. We're going to tune this. We're going to look at this pipeline. So how can we tune the communication about uh, maintenance of bridges and locks 
through this process. They hear, they only registrate for themselves and not knowing that it's used for the environment. And on the other hand, we're going to look, can we probably use this open data? It is there already. So we don't have to publish it, it's already there. For us to, to communicate to the farmer via WhatsApp or to publish that on our website. So this is an example of uh, 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 more uh, chances uh, with open data, which we are going uh, in the next month also did um, to, uh, to operate. Uh, the next case is uh, also uh, related to farmers, but uh, as I told you, um, Flevoland is built from the sea, actually. So they put land in the sea, and right now it looks like the, the land is also realizing that Flevoland is a little bit boring, so it's going to go subside again into uh, the water. <laughs> so there's a lot of problems uh, in the province with uh, the ground, uh, actually. We spoke to one farmer, she's going 70 centimeters down in uh, 10 years. So they have a lot of problems uh, with this, uh, not only farmers, but a lot of different players in the area. And this is a project together with the Water Authority. And the Water Authority also, of course, has a lot of problems because of this uh, subsidence in the area. Um, and the Water Authority also uh, it's, it's a relatively unknown, uh, anonymous um, uh, government in the Netherlands. So they also want to uh, go more outside, they want to be more visible. Uh, and to uh, share more their data and in, the, in that sense help uh, other players in the field. Uh, so these important two Im ambitions or challenges, uh, we wrote a challenge together with the Water Authority and it, said it goes like, how can open data support farmers in subsidence areas in their primary activities? And as you can see, uh, we really went to the farmers. Um, the farmers and the, the context of the farmers and the Water Authority it collides on soil and water. So that's the, where, where they meet each other. Um, and we went to the farmers, and we went to have a conversation at their kitchen table. We brought pie for them. They gave us milk, as you can see. Um, and we asked them, how can we help? What are your challenges in relation to soil and water? What problems are you right now experiencing when doing your primary activities? And they told us, okay, there's so much water on my land, and my crops gonna grow bad. Or, they say uh, the water quality, uh, I don't know the water quality, the water quality of the water I use to water my crops. Because the, the measurement points of the water authority are too far spread out uh, through the province. Uh, or they told us, um, uh, I, I, I do not know the water level. So I have to know the water level of the, uh, of the groundwater in order to know what machines I have to use to work my land. And in these conversations, we were continuously looking for uh, trigger points uh, with data. So what data do they use to solve their problems? Do they use data of governments? Do they use other kinds of data? Do they collect data themselves? So it, we're, we're continuously harvesting uh, information and data points. And uh, the next slide is um, everything that we harvested. You don't have to read it. Uh, but these are the streams that we collected. So th an important one was about the soil subsidence. They have so many problems because of the soil subsidence. Uh, they one parcel of land, in one parcel of land, there can be 10 different points of height. So it's very difficult to uh, work your land if, if that's the case. Uh, the groundwater can be uh, only 10 centimeters from your soil. So when you work it uh, with a heavy machine, uh, you completely destroy your, your, your soil. Um, and what we found actually are three important things. One farmer was a biological farmer. He's um, providing to uh, supermarkets in the UK. And they need to provide exact water information uh, about the water they used to uh, water the, the products. Uh, but as I said, the water measurement uh, is not precise enough, so he has to measure it himself. It costs him a lot of money. Um, and another example is that for the, the height levels, um, and they use a, a data that's six years old, uh, while the farmers themselves, they measure it uh, every, uh, every time they work the land. So the water authority uses all old data. It's also an outcome of this, of this project. And another one, as I told you already, uh, used popular channels. The farmers that, are, uh, that told us that they used a solution that's already processing open data um, on parcel level. So they have all layers of information, it's all open data, uh, and the Water Authority can just uh, well, uh, connect to this, to this solution, provide them with their open data, uh, and the water information would also be here. So again, they are be much better in reaching your clients than you as a government are, so uh, connect to them. Very good. 
thank you, uh, Jochen. Um, well, we have uh, still a couple of minutes, so uh, I will give you some uh, extras. <laughs> um, so insights. Um, what we've heard and what we've learned, no assumptions. Too many assumptions have been, are being done about open data and reuse of open data. Always connect to your environment. Understanding is key. And for data offices, always connect to the business. And don't go uh, production, I call it, with your data yourself. And this, uh, go always connect to the business, what they need, and help them also connect to their environment. Uh, adjust data structure to what is needed out there. There's always a gap between the data and what's needed. Always. And then you can never directly use the data for the need, not in the way uh, we, we uh, get from the conversations. Uh, do not reinvent the wheel. Uh, use popular solutions like Wiki Wikimedia and like uh, Boerenbunder. The changes in the data are most valuable for acting. That's what we notice when something changes, people want to know the changes because then they can act uh, on that change. Open data are only valuable when they meet needs. So, never publish without reuse. That's uh, there are our insights. So that's um, uh, what, uh, there are more, but this is uh, very important what we've learned. Well, um, for the time, we have, uh, you have seen this uh, 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 playing field. Yeah, I thought this is the core. You have to, to, you have to cover all the circles and all the rows within the green circle. I ask you, are you in the circle or are you out? Who's in? Who's out? Very good, very honest also. Thank you very much. Okay, two minutes. Yeah, well, we're going to finish because um, Jochen and Rick, they will give you cards. And what I want to ask you <coughs> is to connect with this card to someone you know in your environment, in your network, who you want to connect with and want to talk about open data, about players, about the business, solution, data, whatever. Just send them a card. <laughs> because of the time, we won't ask you to write them now, because you can also write them now. If you, if you write them today, you give them to us in our stand, we will post them for you. <laughs> and you won't buy a post stand, we'll do that for you. So that's, a, I think, a very good offer. So, please, send someone in your network and say, well, well um, today I'm in a session with those Dutch guys and they want us to send you a postcard about open data, so blame us, doesn't care, send the card. You can, all, you can also send it to us, well, well, nice story, please come here, but uh, preferable to someone else. Thank you very much. I'm sorry uh, you, uh, you were not allowed to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, uh, we'll be back. Thank you for the deep dive. Best practices of the